On November 20, 1989, the United Nations adopted the Convention of the Rights of the Child, the CRC. The treaty was designed with four core principles in mind, non-discrimination, the best interest of the child, rights to life, survival and development, and respect for the views of children. Twenty years on, the United Nations Children's Fund claims the CRC has had a significant impact on the welfare of children worldwide. Seventy countries have included children's codes into national legislation based on the Convention's provisions. Important steps have been taken to prevent children becoming soldiers or trafficked into prostitution. And the annual number of deaths of children aged under five has fallen by 28% in the past 18 years. The UN Convention for the Rights of the Child has 193 ratifications. That's the highest number for any human rights treaties. Only two UN member states have not ratified the CRC. One of them is Somalia, which has not had a functioning government for almost 20 years. The other is the United States of America. It's embarrassing to find ourselves in the company of Somalia, a lawless land. Advocates say the treaty provides valuable guidelines and would protect American children from abuse and juvenile detention centres. But there's strong resistance in Washington to ratifying the CRC. US critics say the convention could override national sovereignty and some opponents believe the treaty is anti-family, giving children the right to sue their parents or have an abortion without their consent. What you see is a movement away from best interests of the child standards where the parents are the natural guardians of the child's best interests to a rights-bearing approach where the child is sort of a solitary rights-bearer. The treaty needs the support of two-thirds of the US Congress in order to be ratified and right now the numbers fall short. It is frustrating that the US is the only country that has not approved this and we certainly hope that progress can soon be ma made. I think it's a question of integrity and I'm actually quite proud of the United States that it says that this is a flawed treaty and we're not going to just sign on to it just so we can be part of the crowd. But supporters of the CRC insist Washington should be part of the crowd instead of standing against a treaty whose aim is protecting the human rights of children. Kath Turner, Al Jazeera, New York. Earlier I spoke with Joe Becker, the Advocacy Director for the Children's Rights Division at Human Rights Watch. I asked her why the U.S. has so far failed to ratify the treaty that's already supported by nearly every nation in the world. It's really quite astonishing. In the 20 years since the Convention on the Rights of the Child was adopted, it's become the most widely and, ratif and rapidly ratified treaty in history, and yet the only countries that have failed to ratify are Somalia and the United States. Why has the United it States failed to ratify so far? Well, it really makes little sense because the treaty was negotiated under the Reagan administration in the 1980s. The U.S. was one of the most active governments in shaping the treaty. It introduced more new articles than all other governments combined and was really influential in the final product. And yet 20 years later, it hasn't ratified. It has little to do with any legal discrepancies between the convention and U.S. laws. In fact, what it comes down to is that there's been a misinformation campaign in the United States about what the treaty really means. There are some critics that have uh, stated that it is anti-family or that it puts the rights of children above the rights of their parents. Some, some in and the United in fact, States clearly have succeeded in, in betraying this as a threat, as you say, to, to family and to national sovereignty as well. Does that make any sense to you? There are always critics that will uh, claim that ratifying an international treaty undermines U.S. sovereignty, but in fact, U.S. laws will still prevail. The critique about it being anti-family really doesn't stand up. If you look at the convention itself, it speaks repeatedly about the roles and the responsibilities of parents to guide and to raise their children, and about the importance of children growing up in a family environment. How hopeful are you then that uh, the Obama administration may uh, take a different direction on this? After all, when Obama was still a candidate, he did say that it is embarrassing for the United States to be in the company of Somalia, the only other country that hasn't ratified this. That's correct. And during his campaign, he did pledge to review the Convention on the Rights of the Child and other human rights treaties that the U.S. has not ratified. In August, he fulfilled a campaign pledge and he signed the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. That was the first international human rights treaty that the U.S. has signed in nearly a decade. 
there, the State Department has undertaken a review of the Convention on the Rights of the Child. So we are hopeful that the administration is looking hard at this and will take seriously the fact that ratification is long overdue. And 20 years on, what would you say have been the major successes and what still needs to be done uh, for the Convention on the, on the Rights of the Child to really be as effective as, as you might want it to be? Well, the Convention has certainly had positive benefits. Many countries have created special juvenile justice systems that are rehabilitative in nature, for example, rather than punitive. Countries have improved the quality and access of health and education programs for children. They've created stronger national institutions for children. And governments also benefit from having a regular dialogue with UN experts about their laws, their policies, and what steps they can take to improve the lives of, of children in their country. But, but still a long way to go, isn't there, for, for, for children They're to have their fair share of what they need? I mean, UNICEF itself has put out uh, some quite startling numbers. 24,000 children under the age of, die, of five still die every day from preventable diseases. 200 million are still malnourished. A billion children are deprived of food. That's correct. There are 75 million children who are out of school. 200 million children that we believe are involved in child labor. There are certainly children being used as soldiers in about 15 countries around the world. So certainly there's a long way to go. But at the same time, the United States does not have a lot of credibility as an international leader in pushing for improvements for children as long as it has failed to ratify the world's preeminent children's treaty.